on It's Supernatural. It should have been a deadly car accident, but it was actually a miracle in the making. See how a young boy died and went to heaven on the night of the wreck. And see the amazing gift from God that Odu and his mother are sharing with the world. Do angels exist? Are healing miracles real? Is there life after death? Can people get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, it's Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest from South Africa, she was actually Mrs. South Africa. Good marriage, wonderful children, wonderful career, everything is perfect. And one night, her husband is driving the entire family and her whole life shattered. Explain. Yes, that was a very bad car accident. And after the accident, I, we all fell out of the car. And me and my husband tried to figure out where the children were, and they wasn't in the car anymore. So I ran around in a dark night to find my children. And that was really the worst day of my life, to realize they were not in the car anymore. We found the little one, and he was first out of the car. And then he was explaining later to us, because he only had a couple of bruises and cuts, mm -hmm. that Jesus caught him. And the moment he said that, I thought, you know, we taught our children nice. I didn't take right. it serious. And then I found my son at the opposite of the highway, on the other side of the highway. But it was dark. How did you find him there? You know, I was running around and everybody that stopped just called out his name and he didn't answer. And as I was running around, I asked the Lord, Lord, help me. And the next thing, the Spirit of God just led me to the other side of the highway. My husband said to me, you would never be there. It would never be there. It's too far. But I ran and I just fell over his body. So I spoke to him, but he was already in a coma, so I thought he was dead. And, and But you were also concerned that uh, another car might hit you, it was coming towards you, and it's night. Uh, what happened to you at that moment? While I was busy with him trying to figure out if he was alive or not, a car tried to avoid the accident scene and where all the people stopped. So he went in the bush and this is where exactly where we were. So I jumped up because I realized this car is going to drive over us. Mm -hmm. And as I jumped up and I looked into the, the lights of the vehicle, a very strange thing happened to me. My whole body starts shaking, but not like when you're cold. It's like really, really shaking. And I was looking at this lights of this car and the next thing after the shaking, the heat, it's like fire. I could tell where it went. It went right through my whole body. And after that, I could say it's here and then at my feet. And right after that, the peace of the living God was with me. And to have peace in this worst situation. It's almost impossible it is, to imagine. Absolutely. But that is when the presence of God is there, then you have that peace. And of course, your son, uh, you could see, was, was dead. Uh, but you found out later when you were having that peace, what was going on with your son? When I had this peace, he was in heaven. Jesus, what happened actually there later on, after he was in a coma for months, and he came out of the coma, but he couldn't speak. The only thing that he could do was write. And then he was explaining while he was writing to me. That night on that accident scene, I looked into Jesus' eyes, the Messiah's eyes, where he took him, picked him up and took him to heaven where he was in heaven the whole time. And God was teaching him the Word. The Word of God is today in his heart. Did he know the Word? Did oh, no. he know the Bible? Before? Oh, not at all. I mean, he was so normal 12-year-old kid. So while he was in heaven, the whole Word was downloaded into him? Absolutely. Today he can tell you any scripture. He can, he, when he writes, he would just download scriptures. And um, 
and there in heaven the time and he also said you know if you did not surrender me mommy to Jesus I would have been dead and so yeah that the whole how did he know that you surrendered him to Jesus for me that was the strangest part because he could not because he was in a coma in my eyes but I'll ha while he was on the machines and they was they told me they're going to stop the machines I ran opposite ICU I stayed in a room I ran into the room and I did a strange thing in my eyes I took my jacket and I pulled it over my face and I didn't know it then, but today I know this is like a prayer closet. And I called yes. out to the Lord. And that we, we Jewish people used to take our talit and put it, and so we still do it today, over our head. And that's what Jesus did yes. when he said, go into the closet, meaning yes. the talit or prayer shawl yes. over your head. And then God spoke to me in an audible voice. And he said to me, are you willing to surrender him to me? And I really was not ready. But God asked that from Abram and he asked it for all of us because he was like an idol in my life. And God don't want us to have idols. And he wants to be our first love. And that is why I needed to surrender him. And that is why he could know that I surrendered him to Jesus. And he said to me in this letter, if you did not surrender me, I would have been dead. Mm. Well, you know, the thing that is really hard for me to comprehend is when I look at your book, uh, A Message from God, uh, it says, I want to dedicate this book to Duane and Anton in heaven. Uh, what is this all about? Well, the time while he was in heaven, God showed him the whole place and the houses and the children and the babies and everything. And then he came back and one day he starts writing about the two children he saw in heaven. So he gave the addresses of the parents and he was telling about both children, how they are so happy in heaven, but they do not want to come back. But their children are worried about the parents. Have they ever surrendered their life to Jesus? And he gave this little letter and say, your son is happy, he's healed, he's complete. But what about you? So I was really thinking this medicine is too strong. How can this be? <laughs> and I just kept the letters separate. And one day a friend visited us and he was writing because he couldn't speak and saying, my mother's not obedient to God's voice. And I said, what do you mean? He says those two letters. So this friend of mine took the two letters. Well, how could you find these two kids that he met in heaven? He gave the address. He says he, he had the address. Yes, he, he says. How could he know the address? It's impossible. Uh, that's, hold that thought. Uh, let me tell you something. This is amazing. And when you find out what Aldo is writing messages from God, you will be. I mean, th th this is so wonderful. Uh, not many books will I read twice. This is a book I want to read many times because it's God the life of God and your intimacy with God. Don't go away, we'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, it's Sid Roth here with Rita McPherson. And uh, Rita, this is such an amazing story. Your son literally died. He went to heaven. Uh, he came back with the Word of God downloaded in him. He didn't have it before he went. No. He knew two young boys that had died, and he wanted a message to go to their parents, and he knew where they lived. Yes. Uh, but uh, when he came back to life, and you're nursing him at home, what was wrong with him physically? He had a very bad head injury. So with a head injury, he had a midbrain, brain stem, the left side, the right side. He couldn't walk, he couldn't talk, he couldn't speak, he couldn't eat, he could do nothing. He could really do nothing. That's why we took him home. They actually gave us an address and said, book him in there. But we took him home because I knew what God said to me. God said to me, I'm going to heal this child. And this child is going to tell the world that Jesus is alive. So 
I took him, we took him home and we nursed him. And for months he was blind, he couldn't speak and anything of that. But while we were keeping on speaking life into him, God was healing him day by day by day. And then eventually the one eye opened, but the other eye was still blind. Mm. And after the nurses left, he slept in front of my bed. And that night he woke me, he couldn't speak, he was writing, he woke me and he said he wants to write something. He said to me, did you see Jesus? I said, no, he said he was right here in the room. I said, no, I had a dream. Like you speak to Jesus, but in a dream. He says, no, mommy, he was here, he touched my eye. And the first thing I said to him, can you see now? Of course. And he says, no. And I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I need a miracle now. He says, no, you need faith now, <laughs> faith. And then two weeks later, as I came back one night, that blind eye was still open because every night you had to put self in to close it. And he, the blind eye was open and I was just kneeling and praying softly in my spirit to him. And afterwards I just give him a kiss like this and he did it back. And the blind eye was open and the other one was asleep. And I asked him, Lao, can you see me? And he just showed me, yes. And he kept on writing. He said, I told you he was here and he touched my eye. And there I realized God's timing is just different than ours. But what God started, he will complete in our lives. Now, he is actually receiving messages from God and he's writing these messages down and you have these messages in your book. Um, give me an example of one of the messages. One of the messages was, well, he w a couple of months ago, he woke me, uh, he wrote this morning, he said to me, Mommy, Jesus spoke to me last night about his word and he's coming again. And these letters is on the website, you can see it there, which is going to be very, very, very soon. Do you know that, mummy? And then he would tell about the bride. Jesus wants to come and fetch his bride, but his bride is not ready. Tell me about, because this is amazing, when he was weeping one day about the golden bridge. Yes. He can't cry like he normally cries. He would just make noises. And he was laying his head on his arms and crying. And I said, why are you crying? He says, in heaven there's a golden bridge. And after the bridge, there's a huge door with poles around it. He says, but there's people standing outside and they're crying. I said, why are they crying? He says, they can't go in. And I said, into what? He looked at me and said, don't tell me you don't know. I said, no, I'm not sure. He says, there's a wedding feast inside and everybody's not ready. So every day you will journal a whole page. That next morning, he only did this. He wrote Matthew 25 and he left for school. And he shouldn't have not, he should have not even known what was in Matthew 25. Well, I didn't. So what did you, you read it immediately. <laughs> yes, I ran to my Bible and I read it and it was about the 10 virgins. Five wise, five, five foolish. Five is wise and five foolish. Five is ready and five is not. And I tell you, this is the bride today. We're all in church, but Jesus did not come to give us religion. He came for an intimate, passionate, love relationship with a king. I've got a question for you. You went in South Africa to a good, born again, charismatic church, the best in the city. Mm -hmm. You certainly heard the truth. What is the difference between you today and when you were Miss, Mrs. South Africa uh, and going to the church? What's the difference? The difference is sometimes we sit in a church and we think the church is the place where we can get everything, but you get knowledge. And the fruit of knowledge is works. And I think the church today, and the church is me and you. You know, I'm not talking about a specific church. It's knowledge gives you works. The fruit of knowledge is works, but the fruit of, of the spirit and the fruit of a rhema word is an intimate love relationship with the king. And the difference is that we keep ourselves busy with works instead of with a king. So, so today, how have you changed? What, what's different about you? My whole life changed because the night when God revealed himself to me, I found out how much he loves me. And it's all about love. And because God loves me so much, I can walk this walk of faith. 
And because I know now his character, I can trust my whole life in his hands. And I can just give everything to him and, and just seeking his presence all the time and not seeing what I can do for him and try to impress him with my works. It's a different thing. It's a whole different thing. And now the peace is always there because his presence brings peace. And as you push into God's presence, there you'll find the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the broken heart healed, everything that we ever need on earth. But you had an encounter from Jesus about this book. Don't go away. We'll be right back on this. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Rietta McPherson. And uh, Rietta, this is such a wonderful thing that has happened in your family. But the book was ready to come out and someone put some doubt in your mind mm -hmm. and you prayed for all you were worth and you had a visit. Tell me about yes. that. I really said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you know what? I don't want to doubt you. I, I, I don't want to put something out for faith, but I need to know, is this what you want me to do, the book? And I cried that night and he, Jesus himself, came into my room and the Shekinah glory just filled the room. It was white, white glory of God. He shook kind of glory. And then I, I spoke to him. I said, Jesus, is this you? He says, yes. I forgot about the book. He, I said to him, just tell me, why are you so good to me? And he answered, he says, because you, because you love me so much. And then he says, the book. He says, give me back the book. So I saw myself giving Jesus the book. So he took the book just like this and he blew his spirit in the book. Because we all need his ruap breath. And he did that and he gave it back to me. He says, everybody that read this book will receive my spirit. They will feel my spirit and my spirit, the spirit of truth will open up this truth to them. Okay, I can tell you when I read this book, I could literally feel the presence of God pushing me into a greater love relationship yes. with him. Uh, it's books new, but are you getting reports from other people besides me? All around the world. I tell you, the first thing, and this, then I get tears in my eyes, because the first thing people will tell me is, I could not leave the book, and the Spirit of God really spoke to me all the whole way, and I felt the presence of God and the Spirit of God. And that's all that I want to know, because this is exactly what Jesus told me will happen. You were at the UN, and there was a beautiful mosaic, and God spoke to you. Tell me about that. The February, just before the accident, me and my family were visiting New York, and we were at the UN, and I looked at this mosaic. I did a strange thing. I said to Alder, come and stand here. Let me take a picture of you. At the back was the mosaic. And as I took that picture, the Spirit of the Living God spoke to me, Rema Woods, and he says, all the broken pieces of your life is nothing more than a beautiful mosaic of your future. And this is what me and my family are busy doing now. The Holy Spirit created a new life for us and we have to take the pieces of your life and create a new mosaic. In, in your book you talk about it's either let God create the new mosaic of your life or go back and grab the pieces and try to put it together yourself and you cut yourself. You will find these two people, the one will ask the Lord to help you to put it all together and create a new mosaic. The other one will also gather the pieces because that's part of trauma. And you will gather the pieces, but you will find after a year when you pass there, you will see these blood and they are bruised and cut because they have not start building this mosaic. Life is like that. You have to make a choice with what you have in your hands. Pitiful or powerful, you can't be both. You have to surrender your life to God and help. God will help you to create this mosaic. All the broken pieces of our lives, what you see, is nothing more than a beautiful mosaic of your future. And this is life. Now there was a message that I read about uh, uh, that your son talked about from Revelation mm -hmm. and he said we are the Laodicea church. What did he mean? Yes, one morning he was 
writing and he says, Mommy, you have to go and tell the world that Jesus says, this is the Laodicea church. My husband asked me, what is the Laodicea church? I said, this is the last church in the book of Revelation. So I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, what do you want to tell me about? What do, uh, I, prayed, uh, I was in a church that Sunday and I said, what do you want me to tell the people? And I was starting telling the people this Sunday about the Laodicea church and I said, you know, he was explaining, he says, cold or hot, but now you're lukewarm. And the Spirit of God stopped me. He says, no, 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 wait, wait. What do you people call colds? We say in South Africa, we said ice cold. Hmm. And if it's hot, like fire. And the rest, lukewarm. So you can choose today. Are you ice cold or are you fire hot? Hot like fire. So, and what does he say will happen if we're just like everyone else. The lukewarm, lukewarm, you see, and this is where you, you don't need God. Everything is so great in your love. And this is what the book of Revelation says. He says, I'll spit you out of my mouth. But you were like that. Exactly. I mean, you went to church, you would consider yourself a Christian, but exactly. you were doing it yourself. You see, God wants us to Your have way. His fire. He wants us to have this fire of God inside of you. And if you're sitting today and listening to us and you don't feel the fire of the living God in you, you, you have to know, you have to push in. There's more. There's more than just being born again. There is the fire of the living God. There's an abundant life that he speaks about in the Word in John 10, 10. He says, I sent the Messiah so that you can have life and life in abundance. And that is right now for us now. But we have to push into his presence. And we have to want an intimate love relationship with the Lord. And then you realize you can do nothing. We need the Lord. Not only do we need the Lord, you need the Lord. You need to know. You could be going to a church, a synagogue, a mosque, but do you have this intimacy with God? Uh, this passion you can't work up. Uh, you, you can't do works. It's a gift from God. But this is what the Bible says. If you draw near to God, and of course you must draw near to Him in truth, and there's no other name given unto men in which we must be saved but the name of Jesus. If you draw near to God, He says, I promise you, I, God, promise you, I promise you, I will draw near to you. So step one, is to tell God you're sorry. You're sorry for all the sins, all the unforgiveness, all the unbelief, all the lack of trust, all the things you've done wrong, and all of those hurts. Just give it to Him. Tell Him you're sorry for what you did wrong. You're sorry for the way things are going. You're sorry that your mosaic, that beautiful picture, is all shattered and you're ready to let him put that mosaic back together. And what you need to do is to tell him you're sorry, ask him to forgive you of all of your sins, and come and live inside of you, and let him create the greatest mosaic the world has ever seen. You are a masterpiece because I'm looking at you through God's eyes right now. I'm not looking at you through what you, the mess the world has made of you and you've made of the world. I'm saying those broken pieces, you can be in a self-pity party or you can say, Holy Spirit, I give up. Make a masterpiece out of my life. I want to love you more. I want to know you. I want to go to that great Jewish wedding. And Rita, if you have never been to a Jewish wedding, you don't know what fun is, but I'm talking about the Jewish wedding in heaven. You have an engraved invitation. Just accept. <laughs> yes.